guys, welcome back. We've got turkeys almost ready to hatch. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a turkey brooder and what we're gonna to need to keep our turkeys grown good, keep them safe, keep them warm, and what feed is required for our day old turkeys. As you can see, I have most of the stuff I'm going to use set out. You're gonna need a heat lamp. Definitely make sure your heat lamp is working. Plug it in prior to your chicks or turkeys hatching. Always have a spare bulb on hand too, just in case your heat lamp goes out. I've got my cleaned out feeder ready to go. I've got my cleaned out water ready to go. This is a one gallon water, which I like using at the beginning, depending on how many chicks or turkeys are gonna hatch only because I do like to add one packet of electrolytes just to give them a good start, keep them hydrated, and keep them coming back to have water because there is sodium in it. Also with turkeys, when you get your water ready, you guys, they are a little bit different than chicks. I do recommend either putting marbles or cleaned rocks in the base of your water, if not, Turkeys are kind of crazy when it comes to water. They'll actually get in there, they'll dunk their heads a little too far, and they can actually drown or get themselves super wet and chilled. So it's a good idea, pick up some marbles or go find just some simple rocks, clean them up real good and get them in the base. You'll need to get some turkey starter. This is a 30% turkey starter, not medicated because it's not required. They don't need it. You definitely wanna make sure you have a 26 to 30% protein to start them out on. They will stay on this for the first nine to 10 weeks. Now, in our brooder, I am using a large flake white shaving, which is fur. You can also use pine. You just wanna make sure it is a larger flake, not smaller. Your turkeys might wanna pick around and possibly pick up some of that smaller shavings and eat. I do a good three to four inch base, just so they've got some good cushioning, a little bit of warmth. Here's a good idea of the larger flake we're talking about, you guys. And you definitely wanna make sure they are completely dried. Do not use wet shavings in there. Once again, that will chill your chicks or your turkeys. Once my turkeys have hatched and I bring them out to my brooder, for the first week, you want your brooder to be around 95 to 100 degrees. They will thrive, they will stay warm. If you think about it, they come out of an incubator that is typically 99.5 until those last few days, which, you know, we decrease the temperature to 98.6. It's a good idea. You may want to put a little thermometer in here to show what kind of heat we're getting. I also like using the rule of thumb when I hang my heat lamp. If my turkeys are super huddled together, they don't wanna move, that tells me my light is too high. So drop it down a little bit, you guys. You know, your, your chicks or your turkeys will indicate if they're hot, if they're cold, if things are going just great. Because if they're too hot, they're gonna be on the other side of your brooder not wanting anything to do with the heat lamp. So just pay attention to that for the first 24 to 48 hours. When it comes to a brooder, there are several different things you can use. I personally love this stock tank. We picked it up at a garage sale and it works perfect for my turkeys or my chicks. Basically, we got a wire mesh grate on the top, which I will wire on so it can't get scooted. I hang my heat lamp off of this wire grit so I know it's 100% safe. I've never had an issue in all these years. If you're gonna use a homemade wood box or a plastic tote and make your own stand for the heat lamp, just make sure everything is secure if you're using a heat lamp. They also make heating pads that are for baby chicks. I've never used one, but I've actually heard good results. And so you can always try that way if you're a little skeptic about the heat lamps. But like I said, I haven't had an issue because we've been really safe about it. 
You also want to make sure, depending on which brooder you're using, that it's big enough for how many turkeys you are going to hatch. They need at least one square foot per turkey. Turkeys are quite a bit slower, they move slower, they can actually trample on each other, and we don't want that. We don't want any of these guys getting hurt. Well, that about sums it up, you guys. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We've got everything ready to go. So the moment those turkeys start hatching and they get dried off, we're gonna be moving them out to this brooder and I'm gonna be giving you guys an update and letting you see how all this takes place. I thank you guys for following this journey and we've only got a few more days to go. Have a good day.